what do you reflect upon now about, about speaking to Alan Thicke? I mean, it's so strange. I was just speaking to him, I believe, last Thursday was when we did that interview. Um, you know, the one thing you realize when you speak to Alan Thicke is immediately you know you're speaking to Alan Thicke. And he was very aware of his legacy, that he was, he even said to me, he said, you know, the reason late night didn't really work out for me is because it's the realm of the stand-up comedian and I'm more of a, a schmoozy kind of guy, which was kind of his reputation, a, a smooth talking kind of slick schmoozy kind of guy. And he said to me, Tom, at this point in your career you either end up an icon or a punchline. And he was so honored to be Canadian, considered to be a Canadian icon when I asked him about it. However, when he tweeted about our interview and I wrote that, I said, Alan Thicke says you're either going to be an icon or a punchline. He said, some days I feel like both. You know, he was a, a really kind and generous man and a man at his stature and a man who has had the career that he's had in entertainment. You're always kind of nervous about, you know what it's like, Ian. You know, you're always a little nervous. You're not sure what they're going to be like. But down to earth, kind, warm, good hearted, loved Canada, loved being able to come up to Whistler, talked so fondly about his father, talked so fondly about visiting his family in Toronto and said that, you know, he always tells his friends, especially in the midst of the American election, that, hey, don't blame him. He, he, he's Canadian. And he always kept his Canadian identity and his Canadian citizenship very close to heart. Sarah Glashen and I were talking just a moment ago. You probably heard uh, about, you know, when we think of Alan Thicke, what our first sort of image is. You're a young man, a musician uh, from Newfoundland, of course, now a radio host in Toronto. But, but for you, uh, if I had asked you a few hours ago about Alan Thicke, other than the interview, what, what would come to mind? It's interesting because I think I'm a little, a little young for Growing Pains. I remember seeing it on reruns on television, but my, my real introduction to Alan Thicke was on the television show How I Met Your Mother, where he was on with a, a Vancouverite, Kobe Smulders, and he was kind of part of this Canadian mafia. She needed, um, she needed people to help her out, and she needed Canadians to help her out in the industry, and he factored so heavily into it. So for a lot of uh, young sitcom viewers back then, even though he was from a sitcom era of of days gone by when we watched How I Met Your Mother, he really said to us that this was kind of the emblem of what people in New York thought of Canada. When they went to a Canadian bar, he was there. So that was kind of my introduction to modern Alan Thicke. And of course, people would know his son too, Robin Thicke, for, for Blurred Lines. And that and then that brought a lot of people to Alan Thicke as well. But yeah, it, it was an interesting time. It wasn't from Growing Pains. It wasn't from The Late Night Show. But though when I asked him about The Late Night Show, he was quite delighted that people kind of knew about it, though he was, as you heard in your clip, quite self-effacing about the whole thing, saying, I love that line, he said that, we brought the show down to the, uh, the United States and it was a dog. And there's not a lot of celebrities, not a lot of people in the public eye who have that sort of sense of humor about themselves and are so warm and so kind about it. Tom, just a minute left, but, but I'm curious, you know, it's easy for, for Hollywood celebrities to, to call you up and play the Canadian card, if they are Canadian, just for oh, yeah. the purpose of the show. But, but I get the sense that, that he, was, he was genuine when he talked about his, his connection to Canada. It was the first thing he said when he picked up the phone to talk to me. He said, so where are you from? And I said, I was from Newfoundland. And he said, oh, I love Newfoundland. He said, I spent a lot of time there. I spent some time in, in, in Nova Scotia and around the Atlantic provinces. He said, how's Toronto? And I said, oh, you know, it's, it's going well. He said, are you still on Front Street? He really does understand the country very well, knew more about the country than a lot of, like you said, Canadian celebrities who might just use it as a bit of a talking point. He was still interested in Canada. He was still interested. He, he still was keeping up on Canadian politics and Canadian issues. He wanted to talk to me about about Canada even before we started the tape. He said to me a number of times that, that getting that honor from the Whistler Film Festival really did mean the world to him because he said stuff like that in the Canadian Walk of Fame, he said that form of flattery means so much to him because it comes from the country that really means the world to him. Tom, you're terrific on the radio and we love having you on this program. Uh, thanks for joining us. Ian, thank you so much for getting in touch. Q host Tom Power in Toronto.